This is the second uh, module in this series on uh, non-isolated DC to DC converter technology. Uh, in the first module, we talked about the basic switching operation in a switching regulator. And now we're going to discuss some of the ways that that switching can be controlled, the control algorithms that are used to define the operation of the, of the uh, switching action. Uh, and there are today probably hundreds of different control algorithms that have been designed and defined for various applications and for different product types. We can't begin to cover <laughs> even a, a small amount of them. We're only going to talk about three. But the three that we're going to hit here today are the constant on time control algorithm and voltage mode and current mode control. And these three are the most popular types, the most widely used, uh, at least at this period in, in our history. So let's start at first with the constant on time control algorithm. Uh, this is the simplest approach to generating a switching waveform. Uh, it is uh, not a linear system. It's really operating as an oscillator. Sometimes it's even called a bang-bang system because it just oscillates between two uh, limiting states. Uh, the way the circuit works is that we recognize that there's going to be some small amount of, of ripple waveform on the output voltage caused by the, uh, the waveform in the inductor current um, and the charging and discharging of the output capacitor. And we're going to look at that and essentially set up the logic of the circuit. So if the output voltage is falling below some minimum voltage, we will turn on the power switch. And we do that by looking at the waveform on the upper right hand. You can see we've plotted the, a greatly exaggerated um, waveform of the triangle waveform of the output voltage rising when the uh, switch is on and the inductor current is increasing. Um, and then falling when the switch turns off and the inductor current is decreasing and charge is coming out of the output capacitor. And we're comparing that waveform with the reference, and you can see that over in the schematic on the far right, I'm sorry, the far left, where we have a, a comparator that is looking at both the reference and a scaled version of the output voltage. And as I started to say, the logic of the circuit is that whenever that output voltage as sampled over by the comparator, falls below the reference voltage, that's the signal to turn on the switch. And you can see that happening at the valley of the triangle waveform where we get a, um, a, a switching pulse when that um, output voltage reaches the point where we decide we want to put more energy into the output circuit and turn the power switch on. So with the switching uh, trigger at VS, which occurs out of that output comparator, that goes in, is set in the flip-flop, which turns on the, uh, the power switch up above in the schematic. And at the same time it does that, it energizes a one-shot molded vibrator that gives us a fixed time period and then turns the switch back off again. So that one shot is what, just, what defines the constant on time of the circuit. When the switch is on, it ramps up current in the output filter, puts more energy into the storage, and when the switch turns off, then that energy is delivered onto the output and the voltage starts ramping down again. And, and depending upon the load demands, that falling waveform of the output voltage could happen quickly or um, not for um, quite a while. So it could be, um, it, we could extend the off time considerably with this technique. So this is a constant on time, variable off time. Now the, the implication of that, of course, is we don't have a constant switching frequency anymore. So that's one of the disadvantages of this circuit, that the, um, that, that the switching frequency is a variable. But again, we, we don't have an error amplifier. You'll note from the, um, from the schematic, we go right into the pulse width modulator, only we're not modulating pulse width anymore, but triggering circuit. And uh, so there's no linear operation, no compensation is necessary. The circuit will oscillate all on its own. And one of the, some of the benefits of it, first of all, I said earlier, the very fewest of the external components, the fact that it's got a very, it can respond to a load change very rapidly because you turn on the switch immediately when you need it. 
and it can generate efficiency, particularly at light loads, because we could have a long off time if the load was uh, uh, drawing a very minimal amount of current. The disadvantages are, again, as I said, the frequency is not constant. We do demand some output ripple waveform, and that usually is a small value, so there's a potential for some signal-to-noise issues in uh, keeping the circuit operating in a stable mode. And we don't have any inherent current protection, so we'd have to provide any kind of uh, short circuit protection with a separate circuitry on here. One of the other things that we have to concern ourselves with, um, in case the load demand was fairly high, the fall time of the waveform could uh, happen very rapidly and the switching frequency would go up. And there has to be a limit on that or, um, such that you won't let the, the inductor saturate. So usually you'll have a, a, a minimum off time that is inherent in that circuit, and that's shown by the other um, one shot down on the lower portion of that um, underneath the, uh, uh, the latch circuit. So that limits the upper frequency of the device, but the lower frequency can extend out for a very substantial period of time. So this is constant on time, variable off time, but it does, in fact, give us the ability to, to uh, regulate the output voltage. Now, this, this uh, algorithm is voltage mode control, and it's the approach that I described earlier. It was the earliest to be widely used, and it still is used quite regularly because it has a lot of benefits to it. Um, it is got much better noise margarine be, because we're looking at um, the signals that switches have got a gain stage now behind them so that the error amplifier there uh, helps uh, minimize the signal-to-noise pro problem. Uh, the circuit gives you very good accuracy because we do, again, have gain in our loop. And it is a linear circuit so that we can get a dynamic response, and it's running at a constant switching frequency. The disadvantages are that there is time involved in closing the loop. We have a, both an inductor and a capacitor in this circuit, and that um, usually requires uh, making the overall bandwidth of the circuit relatively low to stay away from the fact that those two components together can give us 180 degrees of phase shift, which is enough to normally cause instability. And that's the purpose of the compensation circuit, to keep that from happening. Some of the other, uh, and in fact, that, by the way, is listed as one of the uh, negative factors on this circuit, the fact that there is a, uh, both an L and a C and 180 degrees of phase shift, which requires a couple of poles to offset, or which generates a couple of poles, which is the, um, the, the characteristic that, uh, that gives us a very fast roll-off at some point in the frequency domain. The rest of this circuit we've already described. Uh, so let's go on to the third, which is current mode control, which is improving voltage mode control in a couple of interesting ways. The, the, the schematic looks pretty much the same. We still have the same output filter, the same power switch. We still have an error amplifier with its reference and a PWM comparator. And we have an oscillator circuit, but the function of this oscillator circuit is only to provide the time base. All it does is it turns the switch on at a, at a regular rate of constant switching frequency. So that tells you, first of all, that this is a constant switching frequency switching algorithm. And the second thing is that it still is going to be pulse width modulated, trailing edge modulated. But the trigger that terminates each pulse is not directly from the output, although that is a part of it. We're also, the ramp that was generated by the clock signal in the voltage mode circuit, in this case, is generated by the ramp of current waveform in the output inductor. And what you see, the signal that's going into the PWM comparator is a current sense signal positioned between the power switch and the input of the inductor. We could sense current in a variety of ways, but that's probably the most convenient place to do it. And that generates the waveform that you see in the middle of those three waveforms down in the lower left-hand corner. So you see the upper waveform is the clock, and that turns the power switch on. That uh, causes current to immediately start flowing in the inductor. And as you can see, it's ramping up with, because of the 
uh, value of that inductance. As the current ramps up, when it reaches the dash line, which is the threshold that is set by the error amplifier's output, that is the signal to turn the power switch off. And the bottom waveform shows that power switch being turned off with the trailing edge of the, um, uh, of the ramp waveform that we have generated from current instead of the timing clock. So the advantages of this circuit are that because we're driving the inductor, what, what this control algorithm does by the action that we're taking feedback from the inductor current, we're essentially driving the circuit as a constant or programmed current source through the inductor. That makes the pole that, is, that uh, comes from the inductance being pushed way up to some high frequency beyond the realm that it causes any trouble and where the inductor is acting as just a constant current source driving a capacitor. And that's a single pole output circuit, which is in only 90 degrees of phase shift. So that gives the ability to push the overall bandwidth of our loop control out to a much higher frequency value. So the single pole of the output filter makes the whole uh, loop compensation problem a lot simpler. And that does allow us oftentimes to be able to put that compensation circuit completely integrated into the control circuit. Some of the other advantages are that uh, we have inherent current limiting because all we have to do is clamp the maximum voltage that the output of the error amp can be. And as soon as the current signal reaches that level, that automatically turns the pulse, turns the, uh, terminates the pulse. So current limiting can be inherent on a pulse-by-pulse pulse pulse basis, making the, the overall implement, impl, implementation of the power supply a lot simpler. Now, the, there is two feedback loops, though, to be concerned with. We have a voltage feedback loop that is coming from the output back to the error amplifier. And we also have a current loop that is coming from the inductor current back to the PWM comparator. That, on the surface, sounds like it ought to be more complicating. But the fact that we've pushed that outer pole out quite a ways in distance actually makes this a much stabler circuit, easier to actually compensate. We can look at that a little more with the um, overall uh, transfer function block diagram shown in this next slide where you see the various elements shown in, in gain uh, block, and we can look at the gain and phase of each block and determine the, the overall compensation around it. You can see the, 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 the description of the circuit is the, the, the constant that we want is the reference circuit, the reference voltage over on the left-hand side of the block diagram. And it goes through, first of all, the error amplifier. Uh, then it's compared with the current summation that's coming from the current loop goes into the pulse width modulating um, generating circuitry, and the pulses then go to the block that has got the LC output filter in it, and then we sense voltage and feed that voltage signal back to compare with the reference. So essentially, we're regulating the output voltage, but we're doing it by controlling the output current. The uh, Implication is shown um, the fact that the, we now have an output frequency uh, uh, component uh, determining factor is just the output impedance of the circuit and the output capacitor, which is an RC circuit which only has 90 degrees of phase shift. And that, of course, is much easier to handle than an LC circuit, which has 180 degrees of phase shift. A couple of catches we got to pay attention to. If the duty cycle of this circuit goes beyond 50%, it could be result in instability. We get around that by adding a little bit of extra slope uh, in that current waveform. If we didn't do that uh, and the pulse width, uh, the, the on time was more than 50% of the period, we're liable not to be able to get back to where we start and we would be able to get, have, or we, we would generate a a uh, subharmonic oscillation. But that's easily rectified by adding slope compensation, which puts a little bit of extra ramp in the current waveform. But the fact that we're controlling current typically can make this circuit operate with something like three times the bandwidth of a voltage mode control circuit. 
While we're talking about the subject of compensation, all algorithms uh, other than the, the first one that I'm talking about, which was uh, you know, just the constant on time circuit, that have a feedback loop do require some form of compensation. And actually that's been developed enough so that we find that there's three basic types that can be used in almost all kinds of circuits. And they're shown here on this block diagram, on this, along with the gain plots that result from the resistor capacitor uh, a combination around an error amplifier. And the, um, the first one on the top is the simplest, of course, where it just has a single integrator on the output. That rolls off the bandwidth very low. It's a very stable circuit. It's useful if you don't care at all about the dynamic response of the circuit. And we don't see it much on, on useful producting uh, voltage regulators. The one on the bottom, type three compensation, is what we need when we have a voltage mode circuit that has both the inductor and the, the capacitor that we have to compensate for. We have two poles that are occurring at the bottom part of that gain bandwidth curve. And then that has to be compensated. And to do that, we put two zeros in, which are formed by the resistors and capacitors in front of and around the air amplifier to give a gain boost at higher frequencies which allows us to get higher bandwidth, but we still have to roll off it um, at some relatively lower frequency than we would with current mode control. And then you can see the one in the middle, type two, is what we use for current mode control. We can use that of several other types of uh, switching algorithms. It has fewer components uh, that, that re are required by its implementation and does allow us to operate with a much higher overall loop bandwidth. Compensating a current mode control circuit, I said earlier, was fairly simple um, because of the nature of the fact that you only have one pole to compensate for. And these equations here just show the process for doing that. Uh, we use this type 2 compensation, which has a first pole way back at the, op at the operating point, which is typically caused by the uh, uh, R1 and, the, and C1 in the uh, feedback network. <coughs> Then we determine where we want the crossover frequency, and we can typically put that way out at close to a, a tenth of the actual switching frequency, much higher than if perhaps um, it would be if it was a voltage mode control circuit. Uh, and then in between, we've got just one um, uh, zero that allows us to keep the gain constant during that uh, bandwidth extension, and that's what gives us the ability to operate over a wider bandwidth. So those are the, uh, the individual components, and they can each be determined fairly readily. And in fact, we can put those, as I said earlier, into an integrated circuit, so you don't even have to bother with them. And that ends the second module. Um, we're going to go on. Um, the next one will be describing the, the uh, addition of synchronous rectification to switching regulators.